So what we need to do to set ourselves up, you might have saved a copy of your work last week. Or if not, that's okay. I'm going to save a copy of my work every time at the end of the day. I'm going to put a copy of my site in the network folder. That way you can all start off on the same starting point that I'm at. If you miss a day and such, you'll be able to start off. So the way we'll set that up is open up the computer window. We'll go into the classroom data, drive Z, Z as in zebra, open that folder. Scroll down to our class folder, which is Campos WordPress. And every day at the end of the day, I'm going to put a folder with the date that has a complete copy of the work I, uh, the website that I created last time. So I'm going to copy the whole folder. Uh, don't open the folder. Don't do anything in the folder. Copy the whole folder to your desktop for the moment. If you made a copy of the work last time, you can use your work. But perhaps to start off with, we'll use mine, and then, um, and then uh, you'll be able to use your own, your own file. But that contains a complete archive of the site. In the folder, there's a couple of files that you don't do anything with these. You don't unzip this file. You don't double-click the installer. You just want a copy of that folder. So from the network folder, I copied last week's work to my desktop. And the way we're going to bring it back to life is by following instruction number four. So I think most of you printed it last time. I'll turn the printer back on a little later. But those are the two things you need right now. You need a copy of last week's project. There it is on my desktop. And a copy of the instruction number four. If you've got those two, we'll get started with that in just a moment. Anyone having any trouble finding those or getting, getting oriented? Okay, I'm going to look at the instruction sheet number four. Our process is that we work throughout the class session and then at the end of the day we're going to archive the project so that we can then work on it next time or at home. Now I got a few emails that, it w that people had a little trouble at home setting up WAMP server. Uh, we might be able to troubleshoot it in person a little bit better. But um, these are the instructions. So last week archived. We followed these instructions and we made an archive of the site. We compressed it down to a manageable size. This time we're going to do the next part, the part here where I call resurrecting your site. So under resurrect your site, I'll give us an overview then we'll do it together. The overview is we still need to create a database. Uh, can you pass that forward actually? The next people need to see. So we're going to create a database uh, so that the site can be brought back to life. We're going to copy the archive from last time into the WW folder. We're then going to use the installer file on the web browser, and it'll walk us through a few steps. So we'll do this together in a moment, but just the overall idea is that based on the project we created last time, We'll bring it back to life so that we, we don't have to start over from scratch. Everyone already signed it, so I'll just leave it right over here. And so we're going to uh, use these files in this way. We need to have uh, PHP my admin. Well, in order for all of that to work, we need to have WAMP server running. So how do we turn on WAMP server? You want to double click the W on the desktop, and then you will see a green icon appear in the corner. Yes. So on your desktop, double click Start WAMP Server. You're going to double click it, then you're going to see on the corner a little W is going to appear. 
It's going to go from red to green eventually. So once I've got web server running right here, we're going to click the little green W and select localhost. Yes. We should start from scratch and then bring the login. No, we can use my file. If you go into the network folder, there's going to be a file in there called with last week's date. You can use that. So once we've got web server running, you can click on that and localhost. So localhost is running, WAMP server is running, localhost is running. We can start to follow those instructions in the sheet now. The instructions say we're going to create a database again at PHP My Admin. Yes, we did it last week. Yes, it still exists. But what we need to do is like a placeholder database to resurrect the site we worked on last week. So we're going to create a, a database again here. Notice my instructions log into PHP my admin and create a database. So we'll type that address localhost slash PHP my admin on the address bar localhost slash PHP my admin Once the PHP My Admin screen appears, uh, we need to go to the databases screen right here to create a new database. So I'll click databases. We're going to create a database and we can call it anything we want. We'll keep it simple and we'll call it WordPress. This box here, we're creating a new database called WordPress. Click create one time and it will, and it will create it. You get a pop up that says that the database named WordPress has been created. See, so then my instructions next say, okay, copy the archive site, copy the, the folder with the backup of the site into the www folder, which is in the C drive, WAMP folder, www folder. Well, the project from last week, like I said, it's in the network folder, and it's got the date from last week. I need to copy that into the www folder. This is in the computer. So you open computer. You then open local disk C. You open WAMP. You open www. So you're going to copy last week's project folder. You copy it into the www folder. Yes. Which, uh, which step did you get to right here?
All right, so I copied last week's work into the WW folder. Now, the WW folder, what I've put in there is, uh, is a folder with last week's date. And inside of it, we have a zip file, which has a, uh, every single file of the site and an installer file. So my handout next says, in your web browser, access the installer PHP file. For example, you would type localhost slash the name of the folder slash installer.php. Obviously, if you literally type in your browser right now, localhost slash 2016.0707, you'll get an error. That folder does not exist. The folder that you just copied into the network folder is, I mean into the WW folder is, 2017.0504. So obviously I cannot change my handout every single day we come. But the idea is that it's localhost, the name of the folder, and then inside of it we have installer. So in the browser I'm going to type localhost, the name of the folder, and then installer PHP. At the end of the day today, I'm going to make a backup and it'll be 2017.05.09. So when we do it again next time, we're going to go into the folder localhost slash 2017.05.09 slash installer. Just because it literally says that, don't literally type that. We have a folder in there with a different name. So in your, in your browser, you're going to type localhost slash 2017-05-04 slash installer dot php. The installer php file is instructions to, to resurrect the site. The way we use it is in the web browser like this. We have a database ready. We go to the installer file and then it will walk us through a couple of steps. Now, if your project, if you're using your own folder project and you called it like My Amazing Site, you're going to type localhost slash My Amazing Site slash installer.php. So, whatever your folder is called, that's what you're typing in the middle. This is my I just downloaded one. This one's called Great. Did you manage to get a copy of last week's file? So uh, we'll go to the C drive. This is last week's file. So copy that to your, or just fill in on the right click button. We'll go to the C drives. Yes, we can. All right, so once you go to that address... When you said go to the browser, you mean the browser could be the HTTP one? Any web browser. Any web browser should work. Yes. You need to check your spelling.
So now once you put it in there, now on the web browser, you're going to go to the address, and you should be able to access that. There should be a WW. If it's not there, that's a big problem. That means a research or computer. There has to be a WW. I, I have you. It should not be there. It should be a bunch of data. I don't know why it's on the desktop. The rules that we've talked about tonight are not always here, but it will be needed to move to the desktop to explain the network. The network will be this. So this is the one. We're going to use my file, which has the password and password. So I just put it here? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now that you copied it here, but now we're going to copy that into the WW. Hmm. Okay, so uh, let's go to the web browser, and then let's type that address up there.
used in construction number four. So what I'm doing is I'm going to three. Last time? That's number two. So number three, last time? No, I didn't get it. You can't print yet, but you can use this to hold it. But I said, uh, when I print, when I try it on, you can print it, but you can still look at this. Well, I'm going to do it right now, but if you want to do it yourself, sure, but in a moment, I'll do it too. So, Dash, can you call the folder to install WordPress on the No, not, not install WordPress anymore because that's a completely empty site. We want to use the one that we started last time, or two of them, one with the date and one that was generically installed. This one is to start over from scratch. Cool. This one will be hand cut. That's the one that's in the copy menu. So we need to do that. So copy the last time's one into the later one. Mm -hmm. Did you manage to? Did you? Uh, did you create the other APIs? Mm -hmm. If you don't quite remember, you might not have done it. So I'm going to add the rest here. We'll do one by one. Okay. Where, where's the new? <coughs> Just click once, not click it. And then look at those stats. That's fine. Okay, so you just copy the, the folder. Okay, local host running. Okay, and you want to do the other one as well. Okay, so you want to do the other one as well. Okay, so you want to do the other one as So from this screen, if you remember, here's where we created a database. So let's go to the database screen. Okay. In the box there, we're going to create a database. We'll call it WordPress. Can you call it that each time? What's that? Can you call it that each time? We can call it anything we want. Yeah. Uh, we can call it WordPress instead of WordPress, but that's fine. We'll use it as is. Um, so, okay. We created, we went to the end, we created a database. All right, so once we get to this screen, this is the deployment screen. What's going to happen here is we're going to bring the site back to life. So there's a bunch of options that could happen here, uh, but really we just need to check here. I've accepted all the terms. Now what's happening here is that we're going to bring back to life an existing site. In theory, you could bring back a site on top of an existing site if we're not paying attention, meaning we can erase an old site that we didn't intend to. So that's what's in here. If you open any of these, you can read some things like the notice. 
basically the notice is saying something like, you know, be careful, this plugin requires advanced technical knowledge, etc. So before you proceed, you have to check it. And basically what it's saying is you're about to create a site, and if you're not careful, you could erase an old site. In our case, it doesn't matter. As soon as we turn these computers on, it's empty, it's blank. There's nothing to accidentally delete. But if you're on your own home computer, you may have more than one site, and it's just telling you here, you be careful to see what you're doing, you may accidentally erase an old site. But most likely not if you follow my instructions. So I'm going to turn on this check mark. I've read the terms and click Next. Hmm, this is a little bit different actually. Well, we'll see. So, um, okay, good. So it is slightly different. They just updated the plugin, I guess, but based on my handouts, on my handout. So what we're about to do is on the handout here, you'll be asked several things. You'll be asked to fill in several things regarding the server and all of that. Well, it's asking, what do you want to do? Connect and remove data. We usually leave that alone. Host is local host. We're running on web server. We're running on the local host, so we leave that alone. It's asking for a database, a user, and a password. We just created a database a moment ago called WordPress. Whatever you called yours, WordPress or WorkPress, you're going to type right there. If I called it My Amazing Database a couple of steps ago, I'm going to type there, My Amazing Database. User and password is what was remarked upon before, That's that it's root, and I've got it on my notes here, root and password nothing. Not the word nothing, literally nothing. There's no <laughs> way for me to say nothing except writing nothing. Empty. Even if I say empty, people will type empty. <laughs> So, the user is root and the password is nothing, completely empty. So, the name of your database, it's root, no password. Test, just to make sure, click the test there. Because what could happen is that you may have mistyped the name of your database. You should get success. If you got an error here, it might be, well, my database, I called it my WordPress, and I'm typing here WordPress. So you may want to make sure that the database you created on a previous step earlier today matches. If it didn't, I'll help you in a moment. But if it worked, it's all green. I'm going to click Next. It's going to say one more time. Be sure that this database info is correct. Entering the wrong info will delete an old database. If I've got a, a site that already works, my pet food shop, and then I'm putting this new one into it, it's going to erase that other site completely. So it's telling you here, be careful that you're filling in what you think you're filling in. And there should never really be a problem here. We're using generically the database named WordPress, but in the real world I would be making a database called, you know, Victor's Bakery WordPress. And for a different website, Victor's Web Design WordPress. I'd make different names for different databases for different sites, so that I don't accidentally erase them. Would it have to contain WordPress ideas? What's that? Would it have to contain the word? WordPress? No, the database could be called Kitty Cat. But no, I mean, no, slash, no, slash. no, no special characters like slashes or dashes, just regular words, letters. I'm going to click Next and click Yes. I know what I'm doing. Okay, this says step three out of four. Now, this backup, just one moment, this backup tool right here is useful for our purposes in that we're working in class and you're going to take it home with you and bring it back. But this backup tool, Duplicator, is also perfect for if I'm working on my home laptop and eventually I upload it to my GoDaddy account or my Bluehost account to my real website. It works for that way as well. Migration, going, at, going from my personal laptop, my site, to the real internet. So what this is saying is, here's where the website is coming from, here's where it's going to. So if this were in the real world, it would say it's coming from my local host on my personal computer, and then it's going to victor.com, you know, victorsbakery.com. So this lets you take the file home with you, and it also lets you migrate. Since we're all using my backup from last week, everyone's going to have a new site called Victor's Bakery, which you can change if you want. I'm going to leave it as is and click Next. So 
This is going through my steps here. You'll be asked to fill that in. Great. Follow the on-screen instructions. Great. After it succeeds, it will recommend a few steps. Follow them, especially removing the archives. Um, so what it's saying here is uh, these are the final steps to do. If the site was brought back to life, I may have errors that might happen here. I don't seem to have any errors. Uh, I need to do a couple of these steps. Click on Save Permalinks. And then we're going to sign in with my site. My site, which is admin for the user and password for the password. If you have your own site, you need to use your password. But if you're using my site, it's admin and password, all lowercase. The one that's already canceled it, and it's a test. It's always better to click test first. Yes. Yes. Okay. There's a mouse here. So this assumes you, you did type the name out uh, and did create a database. Did you go to the image here? Mm -hmm. Password is password. All right, so what the point of this screen is, this is a, this is a screen under the settings called permalinks that we didn't talk about previously, but we'll take a little moment to talk about it. Permalinks is the term for your for your addresses of your website. It's a permanent link on your website. I'm going to write a couple of notes here also and put these notes in the folder. So WordPress uses permalinks. Which 
are URLs, addresses. We have pretty permalinks. We have not pretty permalinks. A not pretty one is you know, victor.com slash uh, p question equals 128. And a pretty one is victor.com slash about us. What's the difference? Change the victor. Ignore that misspelling. What's the difference besides that? For the uh, victor is spelled different. Besides the misspelling. What is the difference? This is a readable word, exactly. You can understand it. This is meaningless. This is just a number. This is a number. This doesn't. This does not help your SEO. Uh, the pretty permalinks with nice readable words. That's very helpful for your rankings on the search engines. So good for SEO ranking. Bad for SEO. So which of these two would you want? The good one. So bad SEO. The default, however, with WordPress is this, the non-pretty one, for a long time. I believe they started to change it very, very recently. But if you've already had a WordPress site that has existed for at least a year, you probably had the non-pretty permalink. So the default is showing the number in your database about your page. Everything in WordPress has an entry in a database, everything an address, the color of your site, your products, everything is a number in a database. So the About Us page has some kind of number, some kind of meaningless l number that for the search engines does not help you. The search engine can analyze this link and understand, oh, this page is the About Us page, not page 123. So that's what this whole permalinks screen is about here. Common settings. Plain. They call it plain. They should call it ugly permalinks. You're going to get just a number. So you do not want the plain permalinks in a WordPress site. You want any one of these other ones. Custom structure is okay, but the one I'm going to recommend just to keep it simple, post name. That's the one you want for your WordPress sites. Day and name is okay. It's going to have the name of the page. If I created you know, a product page called chocolate chip cookies, it's going to have the date when it was created slash chocolate chip cookies. That's okay. It has the human readable words. Month and date, similar, except, you know, a couple of dates different. Chocolate chip cookies. Numeric is not so good. That's going back to the simple numbers. So number one, two, three is meaningless. Chocolate chip cookies is meaningful. And post name is a very good one, too. It's the name of your site slash the, the title of the page. The custom one, uh, I think it's too complex for most people unless you have a, unless you kind of know how to set it up. So the short answer is just make sure it's on post name. So my notes here, good and bad. Simple answer, select post name. Set your WordPress permalinks to post name. The URL, the address of the website. The permalink is the is the link, the address, the URL. So one of the first things that I would do then is set these pretty permalinks, especially if you're starting a new site. If you've had a site that previously existed, let's say a year or two. I wouldn't, I would not go to change this right away. We have to talk about something else. So if you have a new site, set the pretty permalink. If you don't have a new site, hold on because we have other things to talk about. On a new site, set permalinks to post name. On an old site, whatever that is, you have to also account for broken links. You may have been getting traffic to victor.com slash 123. And now if you change it to victor.com slash about, you're going to get broken traffic, broken links. So we have something to fix that a little bit later called using the redirection plugin. When we have a deeper discussion on plugins, we'll talk about this in detail. This is a plugin that will help monitor broken links on your site and fix broken links. 
you're going to create broken links if you switch from one scheme to another, potentially. So in this part at the moment, just select post name and click Save Changes. Did you notice this opened two tabs? One tab is the duplicator tab, the other tab was the permalink screen. I fixed what was necessary in permalinks so I can close that tab or window and I can go back to the duplicator tab. I hit the first button, save permalinks. This updates the links. This is especially important if I'm taking my website from Bluehost into GoDaddy, for example, or if I'm taking it from GoDaddy to HostMonster. The addresses are going to be different, probably, so I have to save the new scheme, the new, uh, the new paths, the new addresses. On the testing site, we're going to skip it, but testing site would be literally that. You click and you follow every link of your site to make sure nothing is broken. We don't have time to do that, but on your own real site, if you do migrate your site, you would want to do that. Take a couple of minutes to browse your own site. This is simply, you know, going to the home page, clicking a couple of links, checking what's oh, it's not it's not working. That is that is on purpose. We'll see why. But this is what you would be doing. You would be browsing your site to see if there's anything broken. There is something broken, but it's in my handout. We'll fix it in a moment. So let's say we did that. Let's say we tested the site. Next is security cleanup. Let's click on security cleanup. It says you will now be redirected to the cleanup page. Mm -hmm. Click select delete reserved files. Okay, so we'll click OK there. This says you just brought a site back to life and there's a bunch of files kind of floating around that you don't need anymore. So we want to delete those files. I have a copy of my backed up site on my flash drive, and I put it into the WW folder to bring it back to life. But I don't need those files in, that, in this folder anymore, so I'm going to clean up reserved files. It's going to tell you, you remove the installer, the backup of the database, etc. Yes? You don't have this duplicator screen? And then you want to go to security cleanup. So here it says we cleaned up these various files. That installer file that we accessed a moment ago was the was the instructions to bring the site back to life. We don't want that hanging around on the server anymore. If we're not paying attention, we can go back to the installer and reinstall the site a month later, and we lo we lost all our work. The installer at this moment had a copy of our work from last week. If I were to work on the site for another week, but go back to that installer, it's going to bring it back to the previous state. So that's what this deleting is about. So my instructions here say follow these steps, especially the one about removing the archives. We just did that. Next. Return to the WW folder and delete the remaining zip file. There's one more file that needs to be cleaned up that is not cleaned up on this screen. We need to go back to the WW folder. Right? You want to minimize all of that and open up computer again. Open up C drive, local disk C drive again. You want to open WAMP folder again. Open www folder. Open today's project folder, the one with the date. And this is what I'm talking about. The zip file is still there. The complete copy of the site is still there. So the site has been unzipped and it's ready to go, but the original zip is still there. So I've got the site two times. That's what we need to remove. And just to confirm, it's the one with the longest name. You know, don't delete anything else. Be very careful, don't delete anything except the one with that huge name, with last week's date, dot zip. Click, and, click it once and delete it. So now we've got the site unzipped. That's what the installer.php did. 
It unzipped the site, it set up the database, it's ready to go, we no longer need the zip file. That's what my instruction says. We return to the www folder, we delete the remaining zip. Log into your newly resurrected site, it's the exact copy of how I left it at the end of last Thursday. Here I would test it and browse a couple of screens again, perhaps. And step 11, we're done resurrecting it. So here is the site back to life. Let me pause here, then we'll do the next step. Did that work for everyone? Did you get your site back like I have it? Go ahead and have a seat and I can enroll you in a bit. So that's our steps, that's our process of bringing the site back to life. We're going to do, we're going, at the end of today, we're going to archive the site again, together. Next time on Thursday, we're going to resurrect it again, together. We're going to do that a few times together, and then eventually you should be able to do it on your own, following the instructions with your practice. This is something you want to know after you leave the class, because this is what will let you copy your site from your laptop to the real internet. One final thing here, rewrite module. If you noticed, when I visited my site, I'm on the home page and I go to contact, broken link. If I go to about us, broken link. If I go anywhere, broken link. The reason for that is, last time, last week, the, the addresses were localhost slash the date slash p127. Didn't I just say we were going to change our our, our permalinks to post names. Mm -hmm. So here the server is confused. We had originally those numbers and now we've got real words. So to fix that, this is why I'm saying don't go fixing this on your real site unless you fix this. But my handout says right here we need to activate the rewrite module. This is only something you need to do on WAMP server if you've got WAMP on your computer. If you've got, if you've got the Mac version, MAMP, you don't have to do this. But if you have WAMP server on your Windows computer, you have to do these steps at home. And, and here we have Windows computers. So my handout says, okay, click on your WAMP server icon, the little green W right there. Click on Apache, click on Apache modules. So click one time on the W, click one time on Apache, click one time on Apache modules, there's a bunch of little options. You're going to find the rewrite module. So scroll down alphabetically to find rewrite module. You're going to turn on rewrite module. This will rewrite your links from the old broken links to the new fixed links. Now be careful here. You want rewrite module, not request module. They're right next to each other. Rewrite You'll see the W change from red to orange back to green. It's ready. Now if you try to browse your site from going to the home to the about screen, it should work. The links that are now pretty links should work. But I want to activate rewrite module. It's going to change colors for a moment and it should go back to green. Don't worry if you hover on it and it says server offline, that's normal but it should be on green. If I visit my site and then try to look at a page like contact, the link works now. It's a bunch of steps as usual, but I've got them written down in the handouts. Let's pause here and let's confirm everyone's site is back to life and your links work. Anyone need a little help? Thank you.
Does anyone have a site like this ready to go? All right, so the next time we do it, it'll be a little bit faster, but the idea is we have a database. We use this installer PHP file to bring the site back to life. Now we've got a site. Well, we've got the site that I made last time with a little modification you will be able to do it with your own site if you want but I think just for all of us to look at the same thing it's it's fine for us to all use the same site right now I'm looking at the at visit site I'm looking at the main site I wanna click back on the name of the site to be in the dashboard so let's all make sure we're in the dashboard 
if you still have the duplicator tab open, you can close that. We're done with duplicator because we've got the site, we've got the site back now. So you only need your main dashboard tab. Let me check our itinerary and then we'll get started. So we need to do the, these steps to bring the site back to life and once it is we're ready to use WordPress. So again the way we're doing it in the class is honestly it's the hard way. We're creating a database and setting it up and all of that. It's a little hard. If you go directly to Bluehost and buy a, a website there they take care of all of that. But I'm not gonna ask you to go to Bluehost and spend eighty dollars to set yourself up there. We're doing it for free in web server, but it requires a lot of steps that we do. But as, as we do it a couple of times together, it should make sense. Uh, okay, so we set this up, posts, pages, okay, I think we were on posts, Then we'll, and we talked about menus, widgets, okay, so we've got a plan for today. Um, let's see, we got up to the point of pages, we haven't done posts, okay, we'll do posts. We've all had, we should have the site back to life. Uh, let's go to the posts screen. Click once on posts. If you click on posts, we have all posts. And then we have hello world. This is the first post that was created last week. Uh, the date was wrong. It, uh, it was one time zone ahead or something. But uh, it remind me, we saw it a while ago, but does anyone remember, where do I go to set the time zone properly? General settings. Settings general, yes. I believe I did set it before we left, so yeah, it is Los Angeles. <laughs> but uh, if you had the wrong time zone, you would go to settings general. You should say Los Angeles, it's fine. <coughs> Back to posts. Okay, so posts... Um, are articles on your website. Uh, I mentioned it before and I'll mention it again. Every modern website should have a blog. Every modern website should have a blog. Uh, articles on which are articles on your site that help you get found by the search engines and people. So a, a few of you came also to the Friday class, the blogging class. We had a really good day there. There's still space if you have time this Friday. It's day two of the blogging class, 9.30 a.m. next door in room 207. Uh, what we did in that class was we brainstormed with people ideas for what to write on blogs. Because SEO nowadays, it's about content, it's a focus on content. So if I'm a, if I'm a bakery, Victor's Bakery, I want people to find my website. So if someone simply typed bakery into Google, I'm not going to show up. There's a million other results that show up before me. Well, someone's probably going to type San Diego bakery, or maybe someone's going to type uh, family-friendly organic bakery in San Diego. Someone's going to type a keyword that appeals to them. So if I have these sorts of keywords on my website that people are searching for, I may get found. And the way, and, and the place I put those keywords is in articles, blog posts. That's the big idea. If I've got articles with the keywords that people are searching for, that's how it helps me get found. <coughs> articles with keywords help me get found. That's the big secret to SEO. There's a lot of nuance, of course. It's a four-week-long class, but that's the big idea. Yes? Need a little help? So if I've got a uh, Victor's Bakery, if I've got a bakery type of site, um, 
I'm going to think about writing articles to help me get found. I'm trying to sell cupcakes on my site. I'm trying to sell birthday cakes. I'm trying to sell baked goods. If you were looking for a bakery, why might you search for a bakery? What do you need from them? You need yummy goodness, yes, in theory. Now, specifically, I might need a birthday cake for a 10-year-old. So let's say here under posts, let's add a new post. So we'll see under posts, add new, and then a title, and then something to write. This is where I could write some of those keywords. Birthday cakes for 10-year-olds. Just because you create a page on your site with that keyword does not guarantee you will be found when people search that, but it helps you. Writing articles about these various keywords helps you. Being on social media helps you. Um, creating videos on YouTube helps you. There's a lot of nuances to SEO, search engine optimization. This is one of the things that helps you. So I'm going to click to write something. Notice the permalink adds itself here, which you can further edit. If you want to change it, you can click Edit and Change it. But those are some keywords in my address, in my URL, in my permalink. Let's activate the last, the last icon right there. That's the toggle toolbar. It used to be called the kitchen sink because it shows you everything in the kitchen sink. That's toggle toolbar. You get a couple more options here. This is not the blogging class, so we're not going to spend a lot of time on this. But if I were to write an article here, uh, I would write a couple of paragraphs. The goal is, I'll write it here so you can see it. So goal, 100 words once per month. For your blog. Writing more words more often is better because you're creating more content that helps you get found. But as a beginner, I just started my site. I want to start to try to get found. I'm going to go with a goal of 100 words, 100 word articles, once a month. As I get more used to it, as I get better at it, I want to do 200 words, 300 words, 500 words. You're going to see 100 words actually zooms by pretty quick. Maybe you're going to do 100 words every, every week or every two weeks. It's about the content. Sometimes people come into class and say, they say, well, I heard I can buy 50 articles for 20 bucks. Should I do it? No. No. Don't buy those articles. Don't buy those bundles of articles. If you bought it for 20 bucks, so did someone else. So that exact same article is going to show up on someone else's site, and now you've got a problem. So let me... Let me confirm this. Original content is what helps your SEO. Duplicate content does not help your SEO. So the example is, don't buy bundles of articles, no matter how affordable they look, because other people bought them too. And so two sites or 200 sites are going to have the same content. And the search engines, because they're running day and night, analyzing all of the internet as much as they can, they're going to find your site and another site on another part of the world with the same content, and they're going to say spam. They're going to mark that other site as spam, they're going to mark your site as spam, and you're going to be on page 40 of the search engines. And we know that if we're past page 2, usually people don't look. So you're never going to get found on page 40 maybe even page 10 and 12 and such. So that's why original content which is 100 words per month. Beginner. Your words per week. Intermediate. words per day advanced. That's a lot to do, isn't it? That's a lot of writing. Do people really read that? Yes. If there's a nice article that is really about what I care about, I get a, I get a lot of uh, 
of these articles in my inbox, financial articles and such, I scan the headline, not interested, so I don't read it. I see another headline, I am interested, and I click and read, and I read the 400 words. So again, it comes back to, for example, your title and the keywords and how to hook people to read, to come to your site and, and read. Yes? But like longer blogs? It's really good, yeah. The longer, the, the, I wouldn't say really the longer, the more effective, but the, the more words, the better, because there's more words the search engines can find and people can find. What you could do, let's say I, I thought of an article of a thousand words. I could break that up into two articles. One for this month, 500 words. One for next month, part two, 500 words. So that's another blog tactic. Yes? You put a lot of references in the blog. Is that a good idea or bad? It is. Uh, and, and that's why, really, the blogging class on Fridays, we go into much more detail about all of this. But yes, you want to have references to other articles as well to build, uh, to build authority on your articles. It's like citing, like works cited. If I write an essay in college, I'm going to cite the works that I used to build up my my point of view. So linking to other people's sites, yes, but that doesn't mean put 50 links. That doesn't mean put seven links. It depends on a variety of factors, but my article linking to another article does have a value. So blog tactic, uh, create Part one, 500 words. Part two, 500 words. And release one every month. So I spend a weekend and I write several paragraphs. Uh, and then I break it up in some amount with minimal minimum of 100 words. And then I can uh, schedule posts, which we'll see how to do that soon. But here I've got um, keywords up here. If people subscribed to my site, they will get in their inbox, in their email inbox, a headline, birthday cakes for 10 year olds. Some people that get that article in their inbox, that little preview, they'll say, I'm not interested, and they won't read it. But other people might and click, and they come back to your site. So the title here is your first chance to make your first impression what to actually write here. It's not the blogging class. So I would say something like, uh, we offer a variety of cakes for your special someone, for your special child, your special kid, I don't know, whatever we want to say here. We offer a variety of cakes for your birthday, for the birthday bash thinking in terms of what people might be searching for. You know, people might search, go to Google and search birthday bash or a uh, birthday party for, for an adventurous kid. You know, I'm going to uh, brainstorm and, and create some of these articles. Use only the best. You don't have to write this. I'm just kind of freestyling at the moment. We use only the best ingredients like organic, sugar, and whatever. So all of these organic agave syrup, which is low glycemic index, and all of that. Glycemic index, etc. I'm going to write 100 words so far. I've written 26. I'm a quarter of the way there. And I'm going to write some words, paragraphs, maybe add a picture or a video add a link to some other external site. Maybe I'm going to link the word glycemic index. What is that? So I'm going to link it to a dictionary definition of it. So the nuances of writing blogs, it's not quite for this class, but the note to take with you is you need to write articles on your website to help you get found. What we will talk about is the importance of using categorization. In the other class we go into more detail, but We'll say here, blog tips, use categories, tags, and what's the other one here? Format. Formats. Oh, 
articles that are organized help your rankings. Articles that are put into topics help your rankings because the search engines have to take so many things into account now that if you follow as many of the good techniques as possible, the search engines will see this is a good website. This is a good web designer. They're following the rules. They're trying to do it right. They're not a spammer. Let's rank them better. So for example here, format. You won't go wrong if you leave it on standard. But if you change it to one of these other ones that makes sense, that's a little better. Leaving, leaving it on standard is fine. But do any of these other ones make sense? I'm not putting any music or podcasts or audio or anything, so audio would not work. This is not a simple quote. It's going to be 100 words. That would not work. I'm not going to put a video, so that would work. We have image and gallery. Image would be that it's the main focus is an image and a little bit of text, and gallery is a lot of pictures and a little bit of text. So all of these don't... I don't really need them. Standard will work fine for this article. But if I put in a video and then describe the video, then video would work best. Categories and tags. This is where we need to spend a moment here. Uh, the default category in WordPress is uncategorized, which if you use that one, you're marked as an amateur, and the search engines won't be as kind to you because everyone gets this one by default, therefore you do not stand out. This is sort of a chicken or the egg thing, which comes first? Do I want to set up categories first and then write articles that, that fit into the categories? Or do I write articles first and then fit them into categories? Personally, I like to create categories first and then write articles that fit into the categories because those categories are also keywords that people search for. Create categories first, and then write articles to fit in them. So brainstorm keywords that people search for. To use as categories. So before planning those 100 words and starting to write and all of that, I think of ideas. Uh, I'm going to write articles, recipes, I'm going to write articles, how-tos, I'm going to write articles about tips and tricks. So having those ideas, then I can start to craft articles. So within that categories box, it should be pretty straightforward how to create a category. A category box here. We'll add a category. Click. We'll call this one, um, let's see, this particular one. Maybe I'm going to write a variety of, of articles based on cake. Gluten-free. Okay, we'll do articles gluten-free. We'll have a variety of gluten-free articles. We'll type something, ignore parents for the moment, and click Add New Category. We can have more than one category at once, but we'll just do one for the moment, because again, I would first create my categories and then write articles. So what we're doing it now, I'm about to write an article, and then I have a category. I'm doing it backwards. I would recommend we create articles create categories first and then write articles. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. But I've got a brand new category, gluten-free. Uh, spelling and capitalization does not matter regarding, that is, capitalization does not matter regarding SEO, but it matters for people to read. I would capitalize my words and write them properly for people to read. The search engine will be able to understand it if it's lowercase, but it looks correct with uppercases and so forth. Let me get back to tags a little bit later. Let's say I'll publish this post. So 
So I, I wrote a new article. I published it. I want to view it. You click on the name of the site to visit the site. This blog I just wrote is in the blog section. So go to your blog section. And I'll see here the one I just wrote and the one from last week. So I've got a new article there. There's still more nuances to writing blogs. Let's take our first break. When we come back, we'll write a couple more blogs and then look at a couple more options of writing blogs effectively. And we'll go on. It's 7.33. We'll be back at 7.43. And we'll continue.